What's up everybody? Today I will be teaching you how to screen print using a Cricut. This is not the only way how to do it, but when using a Cricut, it's an easier cleanup and you can also make other things with your Cricut, like decals, you can do iron-on, you can also make Christmas cards if you need to. It's an awesome machine and I definitely recommend it. All right, the first thing you wanna do is make a logo. And once you have your logo made, make sure you export it as a PNG with a transparent background. The software I use is Affinity Designer and it's pretty much Apple's version of Adobe Illustrator. Making a logo is a long, tedious process. I'm not gonna get into it in this video, but if I get a lot of comments on it, I will definitely make a separate video on that. All right, once you got your logo, upload it to the Cricut Design Space. I don't use a mat when I'm printing out my screens. I use Cricut Smart Materials. Next step, go ahead and center that logo. Make sure you mirror your image. This is the most important step. If you do not do this, your design will come out backwards when you do your print job. I make my screens with smart permanent vinyl. And once you load that vinyl into your Cricut machine, go ahead and hit the load button. It's going to measure your vinyl. And then once that's good to go, then you're going to click the play button on your Cricut Maker. And then the process will begin. So go ahead and get your stencil cut out. And once your stencil's ready, the next step of the process is going to be weeding. This can be therapeutic. It can also be a little annoying as well. Once you got your stencil ready, the next thing you're gonna need to do is get some transfer tape. Put some transfer tape on that stencil and make sure you take your time with this. This is a difficult process. You cannot rush this whatsoever. When I make my stencil, I tend to flip it upside down and I peel it from the back, making sure that no vinyl is getting on the white part. Once you're able to separate your decal or stencil, the next step of the process is you're going to put it on your screen. Make sure it's centered make sure it's on there be gentle about it you don't want to put too much pressure on the back of your screen because if you do it'll poke through your screen and that's not good make sure you put your stencil on the back of the screen not the front of the screen and this is where the mirroring is going to come into place and once your stencil is on the back of your screen you can peel away that clear sticky transfer tape you cannot have that on while you're screen printing because the ink needs to go through the stencil. It's very satisfying when you get this part done because at this point you've already put a lot of time and effort into making your screen. Once your stencil is on the screen, make sure you tape a border around your stencil and you're gonna use painter's tape for that. Once your screen is made, you are going to put it on your screen printing press. And before you throw a shirt on there, get some spray tag. You can pick this up on Amazon or you can pick it up at Michael's. This is going to stick your t-shirt to the board. So when you lift up the screen, your shirt isn't gonna pop off the board. This is very important that you get some spray tag and it keeps the cloth on the board. Once your shirt is on the board, make sure you measure it. I tend to go three inches below the collar. Once you got your placement all set up, it's time to add the ink. I add the ink on the bottom of the screen. And then once you do that, you are going to flood the screen. You will notice here that I hold the screen above the t-shirt and pull the ink towards me. And then I put the screen down and I press the ink forward and this technique is called flooding. You don't wanna go back and forth when you're applying the ink. This will cause the microfibers in the shirt to go back and forth. It'll cause bleeding and it won't be a good print job. Once you got some ink onto your shirt, you're gonna to wanna to heat up that ink. This is how I do it. You don't have to do it this way, but I have a heat gun that I use and I heat up the ink, make it a little dry, and then I usually throw down another coat of ink on top of that semi-dry ink just to give it an extra layer. And I will repeat this process until I am happy with the print job. This is the good thing about screen printing is if you don't have enough ink 
on your shirt, you can always reapply. Just bring that screen down and repeat the process over and over again until you are satisfied with the job. When you're heating up the ink, I highly recommend wearing a mask. I don't always do this, but when you're heating up chemicals, it can be dangerous if you do inhale them. Keep an open ventilation when you're doing this. I screen print in my garage, and when I'm doing it, I keep the door open. I would say the toughest part about screen printing is the final step, and that's getting the shirt off the board. I have done everything right up until this point, and there are times where I mess this up, and it will ruin your entire shirt. But take your time with it. That spray tack does get a little sticky, and slide it off the board nice and slow. And then it's ready to be hung up. I usually let my shirts dry for at least 24 hours and then I will heat press the shirt after those 24 hours. When I'm doing the heat press, I set my Cricut heat press to 325 and I hold it for 30 seconds. After you are done screen printing, it's time to clean up. I made my own little booth to spray down my screens afterwards. I also use a power washer to clean my screens. It just seems the most efficient, effective way for me to do this. If you don't have these tools, that's okay. You can just use water and soap. When you do spray it with a power washer, you're most likely gonna ruin your decal or your stencil, and you're gonna have to start all over again. But that's okay. It's an easier cleanup when you use the Cricut. It's an awesome machine and I definitely recommend it. Congratulations, you are done screen printing. Hopefully this tutorial helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this isn't the only way how to do it. This is how I choose to do it. I find it to be an easy cleanup and you can also make more things with your Cricut Maker if you decide to go that route. Thanks for watching guys. I appreciate all the love and support. Until next time, peace out.